everyone. Welcome to the latest edition of Road Shows and Stuff. I'm your host, Doug McLean, here with Frank Mancina. Frank, how are you today? Excellent. How you doing, Doug? Not bad, not bad. You just got back from, uh, where were you again this week? Madison Heights, I think it was called. Madison Heights, Michigan. Yep. Um, suburb, loosely described suburb of Detroit. Uh, for those of you out of country, for many of our thousands of fans out of country, <clears throat> uh, Detroit is located in Michigan, one of the 50 uh, U.S. states. Beautiful. Soon to be, I hear, 51, uh, with Washington, D.C. kind of making a few moves. Uh, anyway, uh, Frank, let's uh, get back to the task at hand. I know you were riveted there, but uh, what are we going to talk about today? Doug, we're talking about healthcare care road shows today. Healthcare road big shows. One. Very, this is a big mm -hmm. one. This is a big one. This has been, uh, yeah, this has been an area of explosive growth in the mobile industry or in the roadshow industry the past several years. I know it has been for us uh, mm -hmm. at MRA. It's grown exponentially uh, from just a few trucks initially or a few, uh, few trailers initially, maybe 15 years ago or so to, you know, almost, you know, 50% of our business has something to do with healthcare. Um, mm. And we had touched upon it weeks past too. There are a number of reasons for that. Um, a, a few of which were working your way around regulations, government uh, <clears throat> imposed regulations on sales for pharmaceuticals and medical instruments. But uh, yeah, it, it's been tremendously successful for us. So what are the, some of the things, what are some of the things you can do on a mobile platform as far as healthcare is concerned? I think there's some different types of tours, right? So everything from a uh, general wellness and screening. So, you know, you can have a, um, you know, mobile, a pop-up, you know, clinic or somewhere, sure. or, or you, you, you can partner with a, an association or an organization that, you know, that does, that's, um, does testing or uh, sure. diabetes association or things like that, where you can kind of, screen people for any illnesses right so you yeah go to an sure event and and you can have that screening or you just have a pop-up in a community yeah sure it could be general screening it could be something more specific uh like uh, testing for diabetes um we've had mobile uh dental platforms in the past yep. for mobile dental services to various communities um Sometimes it works in, in areas, underprivileged areas, areas that are geographically remote that wouldn't necessarily otherwise have access to that type of medical treatment. Mobile is obviously a perfect solution. Um, you can also, for what we're going through now, you know, yeah, testing and yeah. inoculation for something like COVID, yeah. uh, you know, rapid deployment testing in areas, specific areas of need. Um, you know, as an example, you can go to a school, knock out, six, 700 students in a day just by going to their parking lot, being open for normal business hours and running all the tests and getting the results shortly thereafter. And then even going back at a future date to then administer uh, a vaccine if necessary. That's true. Um, <clears throat> I think too, you could also get, into, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, continue. Well, I was gonna say there are, there are other applications too, not just as simple as, as various checkups and screenings and, and, uh, and health checks. Uh, in recent years, we've done a lot of surgical training, uh, working, <laughs> believe it or not, with cadavers uh, in, in being biohazard compliant, which is something that a lot of people don't know. You don't necessarily have to be within a brick or a brick and mortar to have biohazard compliance. Uh, all of our trailers can meet those specifications uh, for both state and federal governments if necessary. Uh, we pull permits regularly and we follow all the uh, mandated guidelines in order to do so. And that allows you uh, to train doctors and surgeons directly, uh, as I said, with cadavers. Well, especially because now, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, regulations on travel, right? For doctors. Sure. And, and, restrictions. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Right. So this allows the trailer just to go right to the doorstep of, you know, the, the, the practice or the hospital or, you know, and, and, and train that sure. particular you know group of, or, of doctors or nurses yeah and going one step further uh it could be used to treat specific groups um you know for dialysis uh mm -hmm. you could have a trailer filled with six or seven dialysis machines that then 
circumnavigates various communities or, or areas within a uh, within a state. Um, we've recently, within the past like three, four, five years, gotten into now mobile mammography or imaging, um, which is kind of stemmed from radiology, which has been very popular. I don't know if you've been to a doctor's office in the past and you've gone into kind of a mobile platform where there's an x-ray machine yeah. or some sort of imaging machine. The reason behind that is a, a lot of these facilities share the cost because they're so prohibitively expensive to lease or to purchase your own imaging machine uh, that that expense is shared amongst uh, multiple locations. And that's why it's, it's set up in a mobile platform to begin with. And we have the ability through our construction processes to line walls with lead, uh, ensure they're safe for the Smart. environment, again, meeting biohazard uh, compliancy and, uh, and making sure they're safe for the environment. <clears throat> and not to mention there's some, the ability to have overflow trailers, right? So, sure. you know, a lot of hospitals were overwhelmed during, during COVID. So having that ability to have an overflow trailer that can, you know, that can have, and, you know, ICU beds in, in there. Exactly. Right? In any capacity, that's important. It, it, even, uh, for the application of regist registering patients, right? Just using it as a secure private yeah. space, climate control, as we often say, uh, that you can just register uh, potential patients or clients. Uh, I, mean, I think I think now nowadays, almost all hospitals have uh, a port for for trailers, right? Sure. Uh, yeah. So yeah. you have the ability to you know power with um, you know power into the the hospital's um, yeah. power system. Yeah, quite easily. You can run off of shore power. You don't have to be relying upon a, uh, an on onboard generator. Um, and obviously sales. Yeah. Uh, and that's been Big going one. on forever. Uh, we, we've touched on this before in the past that uh, it's incredibly, incredibly effective in the sense that it goes directly to the door of the purchaser, of the decision maker, who no longer has to get on a plane yeah. uh, and spend two or three days of their own time, you know, going to a sales center of some sort, making a decision. Uh, they can just go in their parking lot on their lunch hour. Give a Not full to mention, demonstration. You, can, you can have that particular unit or whatever they're selling on the trailer, right? So in the past, they're you know you're having a, a PowerPoint presentation. You're trying oh, to yeah. sell. You're trying to sell a half a million yeah. dollar machine, right? Whereas now you put that machine on the trailer. Sure. And now you can you have that ability to touch the field to see how it works. Directly right? interact, yeah, with that machine, yeah, for sure. Um, why do you think these roadshows work in general? Why have they been so successful for us? Well, I, you know, I I'm think sorry if I'm yelling at you, Frank. Stop yelling, Dougley. Thank um, you. <laughs> I think it, the ability to fully immerse someone in that environment. I think sure. You know, you're 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 not worried about the outside clutter. You're literally bringing that environment to that person. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Right? Yeah. I, I remember. You know, years ago, um, one of our more successful programs for the Batesville Casket Company, ironically, we use the trailers not only as, as a um, kind of a sales platform, but for pre-registration um, or for registration for continuing education credits, which all funeral home owners and managers were required to do on an annual basis. They had to accumulate, you know, 15 or 20 points and you know, in, in a normal year, they'd go to a trade show or a conference, they'd get five credit points for attending that. But yeah. it was very difficult for them to leave their core home business to go and travel to get a continuing education credit. Many of our trailers in our past programs have been certified in order to do that. Again, mm -hmm. just adding another layer of convenience for people. Exactly. It has that, flex it has that flexibility, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, to go on your other point, it has that versatility being able to be used on multiple purposes, right? Yeah, you, know, you, sure. you can you can have the configuration, you know, sales wise, uh, the configuration to, you know, set up for a product demo. And then, you know, six months later, you can come back and set up as, you know, a continuing education um, trailer, right? Sure. So, Frank, you've been using a lot of illity words. So I'm going to use one more. You said flexibility, versatility. How about adaptability? There it is. I may have to Google that because I'm not 100 percent sure what it means, but that gives you like the ability, another one, I think, uh, to reconfigure the interior. That's right. right. Is, is your needs change and your needs evolve? Just change what the mobile application is. It can go from testing, like we said, to a direct vaccination center, 
to surgical overflow, uh, to a sales platform, a post sales platform training unit, um, you know, and any changes that are forthcoming as years go on for a uh, service or an item that you've sold, you can update your client. Um, mm -hmm. No, I agree. I agree. So yeah, obviously a lot of things you can do. And not to mention, you you have the ability to have different stakeholders in there. You, you can have your 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 sponsors, your donors. They can all be have some sort of representation, whether that's you know branding on the exterior, interior, uh, whatever that the case is. There there has there's an, a collaborative approach to the entire. Um, sure, and and that situation. that's a good point too, because then you don't have one entity that's. I I guess holding up the burden of the financial burden of having to put on a program like this. If you, you know, procure and secure sponsorship through companies or, or hospital groups or, or uh, medical organizations, uh, that can help bear the cost and, and put something like this on the road, especially if you're, you're a smaller group, you're a local regional community hospital, uh, you can partner with a large pharmaceutical or medical group uh, to reach your, your local community. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it on uh, healthcare here, there, Doug. I know it's I know a powerful we can go, segment. It was, it was. I think I know. I know we can go a lot deeper into this into the subject, and we and, could. And feel free to reach out to us if if anyone had any questions. Kind of moving sure. forward, Doug. What are we talking about next time? We are talking about uh, diversity and inclusion. And we are having our director of diversity and inclusion, uh, Dr. Vincent Kirkwood, uh, join us. Mr. Vincent Kirkwood, I've just gotten word from our producer that he does not yet have his doctorate. So, soon. Uh, yeah, soon. Very soon. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Uh, it will be very exciting. Almost as exciting as this segment. So, <laughs> yeah. So for the four people listening, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we've we enjoyed it. You know it. how to get a hold of us. Frank, how do they get a hold of us again? Uh, you can just reach out to us at uh, www.gomra.com and feel free to reach out to you us. You do that. have to have, uh, what is it, internet? You have to have internet. Um, it's new. I don't you think have to have gonna, internet. No, I, do, I don't think it's going to stay around for a bit. Okay, Frank, I've soon. got things to do. Hello. All right, thanks, everyone. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. See you next time. Bye.